I'm now going to go through a really quick introduction into the basics of subdivisional modeling in Freeform, how we interact with the model and what is a subdivisional model um, as well. So what is a subdivisional model? How is it fundamentally different from a clay model, for example? Well, if I come to my subdivisional or my subd surfaces toolbox, I'm going to click on cube sub D and hit new and you see that this spherical like object pops up on the screen. It's actually not a sphere but we'll talk more about that in a second. Now if I go to select and because it that sub view is already pre-selected it comes up straight into selection. Now to explain what a sub D model is uh, there's two things that immediately on the screen need to talk about. One is the control cage and that's this cube looking box on the outside and the second is the sub-D model itself shown in orange. So let's first talk about the control cage. So let's talk about how the, um, the sub-D model on the inside is actually derived from the control cage. So if we go to the surface and we take the surface level up to 2, you can kind of see it gets very, very um, faceted. Now what's happening is that this control cage, this cube, each face of the cube is being divided down to four. So if we come to the top, there's the top, and these are the four that it's being divided into. And at the same time, they are being averaged with neighboring faces. So it comes up with this, um, this faceted uh, spherical sorts of shape. Now, as I divide down further, right now there's only 24 faces, if I go to level 3 and 96 faces, you see it gets more um, spherical-like, more smoother. 4, 384 faces, 5, 1,500 faces, and then just keep going. You see that each time we subdivide down, we're getting smoother and smoother result. Until we get to that level where you really can't see what's going on because the, the faces, the facets are, are so small, it just looks perfectly smooth. Now, the Orange, again, is the result of dividing down the control cage. So let's take the control cage back up to something a little bit more faceted. So as I move this control cage around, you can see the model underneath is responding. We can also gain more control over this control cage by going to the division levels for the cage. Right now it has six faces and we can divide that down to 24 faces or even 96 faces, 384 faces and this just gives me more control over what's happening on this uh, sorry I'll state that again and this just gives me And this just gives me more control over how the control cage is controlling the internal shape, a finer control. So for example, I can grab these edges, pull these edges around, and you see I'm creating a little bit of a, a more localized deformation there but I can still take this control cage level back up to the top and you see it's, ch it's kept that change I've made and I can still grab bigger faces and move the bigger faces around so I can get more global changes keeping that uh, more refined uh, change I made. So that's really explaining what a subdivisional model is. We have a control cage and then the derived sub D model we're taking the faces of the control cage, splitting them up, dividing them down, averaging them out with neighboring faces to end up with this model that's underneath. And just as we can uh, divide down the resultant model finer and finer and finer, we can do a similar thing with the cage. Now, now we'll go on and explain a little bit more of how we can interact with this cage and control the model underneath. Ways that we can um, move the cage around, we have edges, faces and points on the cage. So uh, if I grab an edge, I can move that edge. If I control select, I can grab another edge. 
and pull those around. I can grab a face, so I can touch the face and pull that face around. If I hold the Alt key, I can pull it around more freely. If I grab a point instead of a face, then you see that gives me point control. So it's very similar to, to the deform box we already have in Freeform. Now another basic control we have with subdivisional is creasing and sharpening. If I grab an edge here, let's go around to the side that's already smooth, turn this around, let's grab this edge. Here in the toolbox we have creasing and sharpening. The creasing uh, is basically a slider, so I grab that and as I slide it up you see we're creasing that edge, we're getting to a sharp corner, a sharp edge. So let's take that down again and pull it up again. And you see it's interactive quite nicely, so you can decide at which point you like it or stop. So that's creasing. Sharpening is sharpening right up to the edge of the, um, of the cage. So I pull that up and sharpen and go right up to that edge. And this is a, a completely sharp edge. Unlike with voxels, we always have that slightly round. With Subdiv, that is a perfectly sharp edge at that point. So I can sharpen um, edges or crease edges, or I could pick a point, let's pick the back point, and sharpen just to a point. And I could still pick that edge and crease that edge up. And if I go to Sculpt, for example, just to turn off the cage, you can see how we've created this sort of shape with this very, very sharp point and sharp edge fading out to nothing for the rest of the smooth subdivisional shape. Now once we have this, we can actually uh, convert this to polygons, to clay, or to uh, surfaces, solids. Right now the division level looks fairly rough. Um, so if I select the subd again, go to my surface level and just bump it up a little bit. You can see now it looks very, very smooth. So now when I do the conversion, this gives me more of an idea of what I'm actually converting. Go over to the object list, hit convert. And we have three ways to convert it, to clay, to mesh, to solids or patches. Well, if I convert to a mesh, for example, we'll do that first. Now it's a mesh. And one of the nice things with mesh is that it's keeping those super sharp edges that I had in the sub D. Let's hide that away. Bring back the sub D. This time we'll convert it to clay. Now, when I'm converting to clay, I'll pick uh, Add Fine Detail and convert to a new piece. And there you see it's added the, the new clay piece in the object list. But just as we normally would with any sort of clay, we're not keeping sharp edges, they kind of uh, get a little bit crusty. But I can easily go in and smooth them out, smooth the whole thing and hit smooth. And there we've smoothed out the, those little crusty edges. Um, and of course at this point I can continue with any of my normal clay modeling tools. So let's bring back the sub D, and then the last convert we could do is to a solid or patch. And because this already is a closed water tight sub D, when I convert to solid or patch, it's going to convert to a solid. If this was an open sub D, and we'll talk more about, more about that in later videos, then this would convert to a patch, an open patch. But there it is as a solid. And if I go to my patches solid toolbox and hit select, I can now show you the faces that's been built. And you can export this via IGES, STEP, Parasolid, etc. into your CAD system and continue your work in your CAD system. So hopefully that's a really quick primer into subdivisional modeling in Freeform. Uh, creating a simple cube, how to do selection, what is the cage, what is the uh, shape resolution, the surface resolution, selecting edges, faces, points, creasing, sharpening, and converting via the object list. Now in other videos we're going to go into more detail to show you, to explain more about uh, how all the different uh, options work as well as 
uh, start showing you some more workflows of how you could use this.